So I've been trying to get better at solving contest type problems involving functional equations and I came across this nice one. So it's from the International Math Olympiad shortlist. The year was 2018. And the goal is to determine all functions from the positive rational numbers to the positive rational numbers such that for all x and y we have this equation is satisfied. So f evaluated at x squared times f of y squared is equal to f of x squared times f of y. Okay, so before we look at the solution, maybe try it on your own with these couple of hints. So maybe the first hint that I have is to homogenize the left-hand side of the equation. In other words, notice that we've got two things that are squared in the inside of f on the left-hand side of the equation. Is there a way that we can make these two things look pretty similar? Then the next thing we want to do is notice that this left-hand side involves f inside of itself. So can we somehow use this functional equation to build a repeated composition of f with itself? And then finally, the last thing is, why are we looking at the positive rational numbers as the domain and the range? Why not the real numbers? Okay, so maybe give these a go and we'll come back with a solution. So hopefully you made some good headway with the hints. Now we're gonna look at a solution. So like I said, we wanna homogenize the left-hand side of the equation. And in particular, we wanna make the two inputs here that we have on the left-hand side kind of look pretty similar. And so we can do that in the following way. So let's set, and I'll put in quotes, x equal to f of a, and then we'll set y equal to b. And so let's see what that does to the left-hand side of the equation. That turns that into f of f of a quantity squared times f of b quantity squared. Good. And now both of these things that are inputs inside of f, they both look like values of the function squared. So that's what I mean by homogenizing this left-hand side of the equation. Now let's see what that gives us on the right-hand side. So now on the right-hand side, we have f of f of a squared times f of b. Okay, great. But now that this left-hand side is homogenized, I can switch the order of f of a squared and f of b squared because they're just multiplied, and that'll give us another expression. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have f of f of b quantity squared times f of a quantity squared. And that was the real power of homogenizing this left-hand side of the equation is that we can expand it in two different ways by our defining equation. So if we, def if we expand it in this way, we'll have this is equal to f of f of b squared times f of a. And now what we want to latch on to is this equality of these two things which I've underlined in green. So let's maybe write that out. So we have f of f of a squared times f of b equals f of f of b squared times f of a. And this has got to be true for all a and b, which are positive rational numbers. Now, I further want to homogenize this. In other words, get everything with an f of a on one side of the equation and everything with an f of b on the other side of the equation. So notice I can do that by dividing by f of a and f of b. So I get f of f of a quantity squared divided by f of a equals f of f of b quantity squared divided by f of b. But again, this is true for all a and b rational numbers, positive rational numbers, I should say. So in particular, this is true if we set b equal to 1. So in other words, we have f of f of a squared over f of a equals f of f of 1 squared over f of 1 but that's just equal to some constant. So, and that constant, like I said before, has gotta be a positive rational number. So let's see what we've got. We have for all rational numbers a, f evaluated at f of a squared over f of a equals a constant. So I'll go ahead and clean this up, then we'll start with that, 
that fact at the top. So on the last board, we arrived at the fact that for all positive rational numbers a, we had f of f of a quantity squared over f of a was equal to c, where that was some constant was which was also a positive rational number. So from the end of the last board to this board, what I've done is multiplied both sides by f of a to get this right here. So I have f of f of a squared equals c times f of a, and that's true for all rational numbers a. Okay, great. Now we want to further symmetrize this equation. So notice I've got f of f of a squared on the left hand side, and I've got c times f of a on the right hand side. So I would like to remold this equation so that I have a c on the left and the right hand side of the equation. And I can do that by dividing both sides of this equation by c squared. So let's see what we get if we divide both sides of this equation by c squared. I get f of f of a squared over c squared equals f of a over c. Because if we do c divided by c squared, we obviously get a c in the denominator. And this is a nice symmetric version of this equation. Notice the whole left-hand side is a quantity squared, and then I have f of a over c on the right-hand side. So let's maybe rewrite this a little bit. This tells us that f of a over c, so I'm switching the left-hand and the right-hand side of the equation, is equal to f evaluated at f of a over c quantity squared. So now what I'd like to do is leverage this equation to build a new equation involving repeated compositions. So we can do that by replacing a with f of a and seeing what happens. So notice the left hand side of the equation will be f of f of a over c. And then the right hand side of the equation will be f of f of f of a over c and then the quantity squared. Great. But now, notice if we square the left-hand side of the equation, we get the right-hand side of this equation. In other words, we just get f of a over c. But if we square the right-hand side of the equation, we'll just change the second power to a fourth power. So let's maybe do that. So if we square the left-hand side of the equation, so like I said before, we'll just get f of a over c, which is the same thing as f composed with f of a over c quantity squared. That's from that equation up there. But squaring this will give us f composed with f composed with f of a over c quantity to the fourth power because we're squaring that thing that's already squared. So notice here we've got something composed with itself just one time, and that's to the first power. Something composed with itself two times, that's squared something composed with itself three times, that's to the fourth power. And then we can maybe guess that if we compose something with itself four times, we'll have the eighth power. So in other words, if we have f of f of f of f of a over c, that's gonna to be to the eighth power. And we can get that by taking this equation exhibited by the underline in blue and replacing, and replacing f with f of a. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the board and we're gonna state and prove a fact related to this observation that we've just made. Via some exploration on the last board, we arrived at the following claim. And that is for all a which are positive rational numbers and n which are natural numbers, we have f of a over c equals f composed with itself n plus one times evaluated at a over c. All of that is to the two to the n power where notice I've noticed over here that f upper m evaluated at a is f composed with itself m times evaluated at a. So let's go ahead and prove this carefully. So we're gonna use induction and I wanna point out that the base case is done on the last board while we were exploring. So let's go ahead and suppose this is true for n equals k. In other words, we have the following equation, f of a over c equals f upper k plus one evaluated at a over c, and then all of that is to the power two to the k. And now what we wanna do is replace inside of this equation a with f evaluated at a. So let's see what that does. So the left-hand side of the equation is going to become f evaluated at f of a over c, and then the right-hand side of the equation is going to be f 
composed with itself k plus 2 times evaluated at a over c, and then that's to the 2 to the k. Great. Again, that's just taking this equation, which was our induction hypothesis, and replacing a with f of a, which was allowed because this type of equation is true for all a, which are rational numbers, including the rational number f of a. Great. And now what we want to do is square both sides. So let's see what we get if we do that. So that's going to give us f evaluated at f of a over c quantity squared equals f composed with itself k plus 2 times over c to the 2 to the k plus 1. Because that's what you get if you square this right hand side of the equation. But then by our induction hypothesis, in other words by the thing that we built very early in the problem, we know the left hand side of the equation is just equal to f of a over c. So now reading the extreme left and right hand side of what we get after squaring this equation, we have exactly what we need in order to finish this induction argument. In other words, we have f of a over c equals f composed with itself k plus 2 times of a over c to the 2 to the k plus 1 after assuming that it was true for n equals k. So to reiterate, we assumed it was true for the n equals k case, and we proved it was true for the n equals k plus 1 case. So that makes this claim true for all natural numbers n. Okay, so I'll go ahead and clean this proof up, and then we'll finish it off. On the last board, we proved the following claim, and that's that f of a over c is the same thing as f composed with itself n plus 1 times evaluated at a over c, and then that whole thing is raised to the 2 to the n power. So now what we want to do is show that f of a over c can only be 1. And the way we'll do that is take f of a over c and rewrite it with a prime factorization. I put that in quotes because there is no real prime factorization for the rational numbers because there's no notion of a prime number within the rational numbers. But we can think about f of a over c in its lowest terms and then prime factor the numerator and the denominator. In other words, we'll take f of a over c and rewrite it as p1 to the r1 all the way up to pk to the rk, and then q1 to the s1 all the way up to q.l um, to the sl, where here pi and qj are distinct primes. And they're distinct with each other and with the other type as well. Because notice if one of the PIs was one of the QJs, we could just cancel that out and our expansion would not have been in lowest terms. Great. But now we know that this is equal to some rational number to the 2 to the n power. And that's true for all n. In other words, we have this number which, been, which has been expanded in a product of primes in the numerator and a product of primes in the denominator is equal to some rational number to the 2 to the n. But now what we can do is take n in the natural numbers such that 2 to the n is larger than the maximum of this r1 up to rk and s1 up to sl. But now let's notice that this thing that I boxed in pink has a largest prime exponent of the maximum over all of these ri's and sj's. Great. But this thing that I boxed in blue has a smallest prime exponent of 2 to the n, which is larger than the maximum of ri and sj, which is an impossibility unless f of a over c equals 1. So let's just reiterate. So we suppose that f of a over c is not equal to 1. We prime factor the numerator and the denominator in lowest terms. And then we notice that that has to be equal to a rational number to the 2 to the n, and that's true for all n, which are natural numbers. Now we just cook up an n so that 2 to the n is larger than the maximum exponent in this numerator and the denominator. But 
the largest prime exponent that is up here is going to be the maximum over those ri's and the sj's but the smallest prime exponent that is here has got to be bigger than the largest prime exponent that is here but again that doesn't work and so what that means is we've contradicted the fact that f of a over c is not equal to one which tells us that f of a over c is equal to one and that's true for all a which are positive rational numbers in other words we have f of a equals c for all positive rational numbers so this function is a constant function okay so i'll clean up the board and then we will finish it off so we're almost done we've gotten it down to this point where we've shown that our goal function is actually just a constant function in other words it takes all values of the rational numbers to the same positive rational number so now let's go ahead and reuse our defining equation with x equals y equals one so like i said we're going to set x equal to y equal to one in the defining equation and so that's going to give us f evaluated at f of one squared equals f of one squared times f of one but again we know that f evaluated at a equals this constant c for all rational numbers and so that includes this rational number here which is f of one so that means this left hand side of the equation is just equal to c and then this right hand side of this equation is just c squared times c in other words it's c cubed and so what that tells us is that c cubed minus c equals one which tells us that c times c minus one times c plus one equals one that gives us three solutions so c equals zero or c equals plus minus one but we know that this has to be a positive rational number so the only one we keep is c equals positive one in other words the only function that works is the function f of x equals the constant number one so notice in our solution it was very important that we were working over the positive rational numbers so can you guys cook up a function that satisfies this rule um, that's defined over the positive real numbers that is not the constant function one so i think there is one so post in the comments if you find it okay now we're done